Okay, we are back with Coach Hoiberg. I'll open the floor for questions. I'll start with Michael Brunst. Hey, Fred, the last time we talked to you, you said your guys are still planning to do a couple more scrimmages in PBA. I mean, I guess what did you kind of learn more about this team in, in those sessions? And, and I guess what are you kind of eager to, to see once you actually get going here on Wednesday? Yeah, well, you know, I'll start with this. Our, our guys are really excited about going out and playing against another opponent. They're sick of beating on each other, uh, you know, going all the way back to June when we started with this, with uh, when the NCAA uh, gave the clearance to start individual workouts. So uh, it'll be great to get out there and compete against another opponent. And we've got three really good tests coming up here, starting with tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon's game against McNeese. They're a very, very talented team uh, that has a lot of weapons. Uh, they've got the best shooter in the country that we're going to have to know where he is at all times. And, uh, you know, an all-conference guard uh, in Lawson as well. So they've got really good guard play. And uh, we're going to have to be on our toes and have to hopefully get off to a great start, uh, you know, with, with this game and obviously uh, starting off strong uh, with our season. As far as what we saw with our scrimmages, a lot of the same things. I've been really impressed with this group, how unselfish they have played. Yeah, hopefully that carries over. As I talked to him about the last couple of days leading into our opener, uh, the importance of continuing to go out and do the things that have made us successful. We don't need to go out there now and reinvent the wheel and go out there and try to do it on our own. Uh, you know, when adversity hits, stick with the plan and, and get good movement and try to get great possessions, uh, both offensively and defensively. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're excited to get started tomorrow. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a great test. Uh, hopefully we come out and play well. Chris Bassnett. Hey, Fred, I feel like we'll probably ask you this a lot this year, but just overall health of the team, everybody's good as far as testing and, and injuries and all, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we, we've got one more round of testing tonight. We're going to test them again at 7 o'clock tonight, and we'll, uh, we'll have an update in the morning uh, with that. Hopefully everything goes well. Uh, with our testing, uh, you know, again, I give our guys a lot of credit for really doing a great job uh, to this point of keeping this thing, uh, you know, at a distance. You know, obviously numbers are going up. You see teams shutting down all over the country right now. Uh, you know, we just have to continue to, to stress making the right decisions. And you can make all the right decisions and still get it. So, you know, it's just one of those things where uh, hopefully it doesn't go through our team. Um, you know, again, you see it all over the place right now. I saw a couple more games, tournaments got shut down. Uh, again, this morning, you'll probably see a few more uh, get shut down leading into tomorrow uh, on the opener for most college teams. So, you know, as, as of right now, uh, we're doing good, but, you know, we'll give you an update uh, tomorrow morning after the, we get the results back later tonight. Jacob Padilla. Hey, Coach. Um, I, what's, I just well, I was curious about kind of what's your mindset going into the season where you talked about things are kind of changing from day to day. Normally, basketball coaches love structure and know, uh, you love kind of knowing what exactly you're going to have coming up. How are you going to handle this season where things could change from day to day? Yeah, again, Jacob, the, the biggest thing that I'll continue to stress and what I keep talking to our guys about is all we can do is control the things, um, you know, in front of us. And, you know, those things could spiral out of control with everything going on. We're ready for it. We're, we're prepared for it. Uh, but we just need to go out there and prepare as if we're going to play 27 games uh, starting with tomorrow's home opener. So, uh, you know, it, it is. It's been a really bizarre preseason. It is as strange a time as I've ever been through in, in my many years in this game as a player, an executive, and as a coach. So uh, we just got to continue to stress worrying about the things that we can control. And that's playing hard. It's preparing the right way. Uh, putting yourself, uh, 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 trying to stay out of harm's way. Uh, so, you know, and again, our guys have done a great job with that uh, so far. So hopefully we'll continue on. Uh, but we, again, we do have a plan if things, uh, if things do break down. Kevin Sids. Hey, Fred, obviously the uh, field for the Golden Window Classic changed here over the past week. How stressful uh, has that stretch been for you? And was there doubt or concern that the event would be canceled altogether? Well, we, we've had three scouting reports done uh, that, you know, it turned out we're not going to play those opponents. So, you know, coaches, we put in a lot of work behind the scenes to put a game plan together to get prepared for what our schedule uh, is going to look like. And obviously that's changed. We've had three uh, teams that we thought we were going to play that we were pretty much done with the scouting report. And then it turns out we're not going to play. So, you know, that's just the things I'm talking about as far as how strange this uh, preseason has been. Hopefully with where things are right now, uh, you know, we can get our games in. Is, is it going to 100% happen? Absolutely not. Um, you know, the likelihood of something happening 
uh, I would think is pretty high. You know, we've got a 10-day window after our last non-conference game against Creighton before we open up against Wisconsin. So if we do have to postpone a game or uh, find another opponent if we cancel, we do have a window where we can potentially do that. But <clears throat> you know, it, it is. It's it's been a really really strange time for coaches. You, it, it, never have I seen a time where you prepare for a game, you're getting scouting report done, and then you find out a couple days later you're not going to play that opponent. Uh, but we've got this uh, golden window tournament set now. Uh, again, we're going to play three really good teams starting tomorrow with McNeese, uh, then Nevada, and uh, uh, you know a very tough North Dakota State team. So these would be three good tests and, and good games for us. Matt Foster. Fred, a lot of times players feed off the energy of the crowd during a game. Um, how are you guys going to have to build that kind of energy from the sidelines this season? We, we've talked a lot about that. It, you know, if we're, <clears throat> excuse me, if we're out there having a sluggish practice or we don't get off to a great start, we bring them in and say, guys, this is the atmosphere we're playing in this year. We have got to find a way to muster up our own energy. Uh, we're not going to have the crowd, you know, one of the best in the country, PBA, to get us into these games. We've got to come out with great energy from the start. Uh, a lot of times, you know, how you start the game is uh, determines how it finishes. So we have to come out with great energy from the, from the get-go. We have to communicate. We have to battle through runs. This is a team that is very capable of going on huge runs. Uh, you know, Cookshausen is, they put 55 in this building in a state championship game. Um, you know, being from Scott, Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. So, you know, just uh, uh, we have to withstand that. We have to find a way to keep our poise uh, and stick together and continue to communicate and do the things, hopefully, that, w that can get us back in. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's something that is a concern. Uh, but, again, we're all in the same boat with this. Not many of us are going to have fans in the building. Sam McEwen. Hey, Fred. How do you view the, the, these three games? Do you view them as, as a whole? In other words, you hope you get better by the end of it um, and, and you kind of take all three games as a lump or do you kind of go through each process um, every single day you play? Yeah, we'll, we'll take each, each, each uh, take it as a process, Sam. And, you know, normally at this time of year, you have a closed door scrimmage where you learn a lot about your team, where you can put your, yourselves through all types of different scenarios. You can practice all kinds of different situations. Uh, we didn't have that this year. And then you can get out and play an exhibition game, and then you learn even more about yourselves. Did you correct things that you needed to work on? Uh, so being the first test for everybody, there's going to be a lot of things that we need to correct and we need to get better at in a short amount of time with short preps going into our second and third games. Uh, we just have to worry about the task at hand. Uh, tomorrow, that's McNeese. Uh, you know, when that game's over, we'll, what, whatever happens, we'll put it behind us and get ready for the next one against Nevada. Uh, but that's, that's all we can do right now is go one at a time, be in the first contest. Uh, again, it's a unique situation, unique season with not having uh, the preseason scrimmage and preseason exhibition game. Uh, so we'll learn a lot about ourselves tomorrow in a real game type situation. Who, who are your starters? Uh, we're still determining that. We've got it to six, and we'll uh, we'll figure that out and, and get it to you tomorrow. Okay, Jason uh, do you know who your six are? Yeah, I do. We'll do two more. We'll do Jason and then Robin after that. Um, hello, Fred. Just um, building off of uh, Sam's question a little bit, do you have a plan about uh, rotations given the close proximity of these three games? Or are you going to play it by ear? Yeah, it, it, we, we'll have a plan for rotations going into each game. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the six, Sam. So it's, uh, it, it's Trey, uh, Ivan, uh, Thor, Delano. Uh, who did I say, Seamus? Uh, Lat and huh? Ted and Teddy. So of those of those six, you know, five of those guys uh, will start tomorrow. And then, you know, as far as a rotation, we'll get that figured out. We have a plan going in, but you always have adjustments ready uh, based on any type of situation, foul trouble, uh, anything like that. So you know, again, we'll we'll take it one game at a time, and and hopefully come out and play well, and and then move on to game two when uh, when we're done tomorrow afternoon. Okay, we'll finish. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot bigger than you were last year, just in general. You're like you're moving away from the small ball lineups. Yeah, we'll 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 see how it plays out. Again, I I do like the versatility of our group. I think we've got length across the board. Uh, you know, when you got a guy guys like Delano and Trey in your backcourt at six five and six six eight, 
uh, that can facilitate your offense. Thor, Teddy, Lat, you know, all, all uh, pretty similar in size, uh, you know, with Ivan out there as well that has a lot of experience. So, uh, you know, I do like the versatility because of the size across the board that we have this year. Okay, we'll finish with Robin Watson. Fred, you got a roster full of guys that um, obviously have some professional aspirations and guys that haven't played a game in a long time. But listening to Teddy and Trey, they kind of echo what you say, where they have a bunch of players that know they can score, but nobody has to play hero ball. They mentioned unselfish as well. Uh, I guess what was that something you had to hammer home with these guys? I mean, obviously, everybody's kind of got their own individual aspirations, but to bring that collection of players together, to have that unselfish mindset, uh, I guess, how did that come about? And how difficult is it going to be to maintain that over the course of the season now that you're starting to play games? Yeah, well, uh, we've talked a lot about that, Rob, and that, that's a huge thing going into the season. And that is one of the tough things about not having an opportunity to go out there and play another team to this point. Usually you have the exhibition, you have the scrimmage. Uh, so, you know, it is something that we stress. We've got a lot of guys capable of having big nights. Uh, you know, when I look back at teams that I had at Iowa State, we'd have five or six guys averaging double figures, and everybody benefits when you win, and that's the most important thing. Uh, so we're going to have different guys on different nights, and that has to be okay. Uh, you may have a game where you score 20. The next night you have four. Uh, if you win, you know, everything is, is great, and, and that's the bottom line. If everybody's all about the team and, and all about uh, the end result, uh, winning, uh, that's the important thing. And we have stressed that a lot to this group because we have so many people that are capable. And that is one of the hard things, uh, the hardest thing about coaching is how you distribute the minutes. Uh, we do have a lot of guys that deserve minutes. We have a lot, a lot of guys that deserve to start. We'll see who goes out there and earns <clears throat> the clutch minutes late in games. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's, it's a tough job. But if you're going to have a successful team, you have to have role acceptance. Uh, when my teams at Iowa State, when we had five or six and double figures, a lot of those guys ended up playing in the NBA, and the biggest reason is beca because we had success. Thank you, guys. That will end our press conference. Thank you, guys.